And this is a huge, huge, huge one. So I'm gonna dive into this one a little bit. What's up guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be telling you the 10 biggest mistakes that people make whenever they start using exogenous ketones, especially in my case with Pruvit's Keto OS. The first and probably the most common mistake that I see out of all of these is starting out with a full packet. So I know it's super exciting, you just ordered a 5 or 10 day experience or maybe you're starting out with a full supply and you just want to get started and you want to try it out. Unless you are already fat adapted by following a ketogenic diet, please refrain from doing this. Whenever you start out taking exogenous ketones, I always tell people to start out with a half a packet for the first four days at least. Sometimes you have to go even longer than that and sometimes people will actually bump down to a third of a packet. So technically, let's say you ordered a 10 day experience pack. So instead of it lasting 10 days, it's actually going to last you 12 days. So why is taking it slow so important? If you are not already fat adapted and your body's not used to processing a lot of healthy fats, it's going to go right through you and it's not going to make you feel very good. These healthy fats are absorbed very rapidly, so it's best to give your body a little bit at a time to slowly digest it. After you start using it for a couple days, you can slowly work your way up, but it's always best to start slow. The second most common mistake that people make is drinking it too fast. Again, I know it's exciting, you get them in the mail, and you're so excited to try them. This is not something that you can just chug. This is not a protein shake. This is something that your body takes time to process and digest. So again, if your body is not used to processing healthy fats or hasn't done it in a long time, you have to give your body time to digest it. If you are going to take these ketones and just chug them, you are literally just asking for digestive upset. Please don't do that. So ideally, when you're starting out with ketones, they say to start out taking at least 30 minutes to drink your ketones. I personally tell people to take about 45 minutes to an hour before you finish your ketones. Now that's whether you're drinking the full packet or you're just still starting out in the early days with a half of a packet. Now in addition to that, something else that you can do to help prevent that digestive upset is to take vitamin K2 or lipase enzyme. But the most important thing overall is just to slow down. The third thing is body composition. So especially if you are someone who is using exogenous ketones for the purpose of weight loss. So Prove It is not a weight loss company. These are not weight loss supplements. They help you to burn fat. So burning fat and losing fat and losing weight are two different things. So you can't look at them the same. So if you are solely focusing on what that number on the scale is, you're not actually getting a real idea of what your body is doing. Because you could be losing fat left and right and still not have the number on the scale move. The important thing to remember here is that it will change your body composition. So instead of worrying about the number on the scale so much, focus more on photos. So take before and after photos and pay attention to how your body composition changes. Another thing is whenever you put on clothes, see how the clothes fit your body differently. See how the shirts fall differently. You will notice that there is a change whenever you are drinking ketones. The fourth mistake I see is not staying consistent with it. So just like anything else in life, in order to see results and to maintain those results, you have to be consistent with it. So you can't just work out consistently for a full month and then take a month off and expect your body to still stay the same. It's not going to happen. So the same thing with ketones, you can't just consistently drink them for a long period of time and then just take a long time off and expect nothing to change. Your body will eventually go back to utilizing glucose. So even if you're in a dual fuel state and you're utilizing ketones and glucose, once you take those ketones away, the only thing that happens is that your body goes back to solely relying on glucose. The fifth mistake that I see is changing your diet right away. So unless you are already following a ketogenic diet, do not drastically change your diet whenever you also start using ketones. Just like I mentioned earlier in this video, your body has to take time to be able to process ketones. So if you're going to supplement with them and then also have your body create them endogenously as well, you are overflowing your body with ketones, which is great, 
but your body still needs to be able to have time to learn how to adapt to that. If your body has been running on glucose for its entire life, and now you want to completely change the fuel source and just throw a bunch of stuff at it one day, yeah, it's not going to go over well. Your body can't just flip the switch and understand that it's going to go from carbs, 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 carbs to the next day we're going to start doing zero carbs. Doing this, again, is like basically asking for a keto flu. Your body is going to go through those sugary withdrawals. Your body is going to be tired. You're going to have headaches. You're going to feel exhausted. You're not going to feel the great benefits that you would from just taking the exogenous ketones without changing your diet drastically from the get-go. Another thing with this is if you drink a lot of caffeine and you're deciding to go the caffeine-free route with the ketones, your body can go through the caffeine withdrawals. The great thing with the exogenous ketones is that you do not have to change your diet. It is not required. You are still going to get the benefits that you would get from following a ketogenic diet even if you decide not to. But if you do decide that you want to do both, slowly start the ketogenic diet after you are on the ketones. The sixth mistake that I see is just taking it whenever. So this is not a situation where it's just one size fits all. You have to test this out for yourself. I can't just tell you what works best for me and expect it to work best for you. Everybody is different. So just try a couple things out. You can either have this with a meal or without a meal on an empty stomach. So if you have an empty stomach and you don't feel great, maybe try taking it with a meal or vice versa. If you're going to take it before you exercise, it will double as kind of a pre-workout. You'll get those pre-workout effects, but it also is really great for helping you to recover. And another thing with this is just taking it at any point in the day. So if you are someone who has that like 3 p.m. crash and you are just struggling to get through the rest of the day, that is when you need to take your ketones. Just because I take mine at a certain time and someone else takes theirs at a certain time doesn't mean that you have to take it at the times that we do. Say you're not a morning person and you are just a total slug in the morning. Take it in the morning if that is when you need it. The seventh mistake I have on my list is hydration. This is a huge, huge, huge one. So I'm going to dive into this one a little bit. So for starters, whenever you're drinking exogenous ketones, you've got to make sure that you are mixing it with enough water. You want to mix a full packet of ketones with 12 to 16 ounces of water. And honestly, I even tell people, even if you're doing a half of a packet, still use that amount of water. Because as a whole, about 75% of people are already chronically dehydrated, so a little bit of extra water is not going to hurt. Ideally, whenever you are drinking exogenous ketones, you are drinking half of your body weight in ounces of water per day. So let's say you weigh 150 pounds you should be drinking about 75 ounces of water every single day. Now, when it comes to keto, sodium is super, super, super important. And whenever you're looking at the packaging, you will notice that the sodium content in exogenous ketones is very high. This is done on purpose. The reason why they're formulated with a higher salt concentration is to counterbalance the sodium that is lost through ketone supplementation. Now, in addition to that, it also acts as slightly a buffer because ketones are slightly acidic. Now, in addition to drinking plenty of water, you can also supplement with electrolytes. So you could either use a packet of Mitoplex with every single packet of ketones that you use. You can take an electrolyte supplement that comes in a pill form. You can buy water that has electrolytes already in it. Or you can supplement with extra sea salt whenever you are cooking. So one big thing that you could notice if you're dehydrated whenever you start using ketones and you're not drinking enough water is that you're going to be very drowsy, you're going to be very tired, you can feel very crampy, and you could also experience some headaches. So these are all early signs of a keto flu, which can be from not drinking enough water and being dehydrated. And again, the best way to prevent this is by making sure you are getting enough water and that you're not getting dehydrated. You have to make sure that you are replenishing what you're going to be losing. Now when it comes to diet, some things that you can do to help with this are to eat more spinach and to add more avocado into your diet. And when it comes to what is being lost, so when I'm saying that you're losing the sodium, you are losing potassium, you are losing magnesium, and you're losing some calcium. So if you start supplementing with the magnesium, potassium, and the calcium, that is also going to help counterbalance these effects. The eighth mistake that I have on my list is not considering all of the benefits. The ninth mistake that I see is that people don't have enough background information or background education before they start to use them. 
perfect example of this is everything that I've listed above, but it's not something that is like anything else that you see. So I know people associate it a lot with protein drinks or like meal replacements. This is not, this, this doesn't have anything to do with a protein shake or a meal replacement as it's not even in the same type of category. But somehow it's always clumped into that type of category so people don't understand how strong this actually really is and how much it can truly do for you. So with that being said, people do rip open the package, they chug it down, they don't take things slow, they don't understand how much this is truly changing literally how your body is working. If you're not really sure what ketones are, I have a whole playlist of videos where I talk about these exogenous ketones that I take. Um, if you go on Wednesdays, they have a live Q&A on their Facebook page that I can link below. You can talk to one of the specialists and one of the doctors and get all your questions answered there. There's several research articles. They're constantly doing research on all different types of things that this can be beneficial for. It's just not something that I think should ever just be taken lightly. Like, it's a big deal. It does a lot for you. And it's not just a little packet of powder that you can just shove down your throat. And I think to really appreciate and understand the benefits of it, you really have to educate yourself more on what it's actually doing for yourself. And the 10th mistake that I have on my list is not trying other flavors. When I first started drinking these ketones, I think we had three flavors to choose from. There was chocolate, there was orange, and there was fruit punch. But now there's a whole array of different flavors that you have to choose from. So if you don't like one flavor, there are plenty more to try. So don't just give up on them because you don't like one flavor. And there's also seasonal flavors that come out all the time. There's limited dish flavors that come out all the time. And I personally don't usually drink just one flavor on its own. I almost always mix flavors. So because I've been drinking it every single day for over two years, drinking the same flavor gets old sometimes. So if you mix up the flavors, you mix up the taste of how it's going to be. So that's one big reason why we offer experience packs. We offer five day experience packs and we offer 10 day experience packs. So that way you can try a variety of flavors instead of just jumping in with one flavor and hoping and praying that you like that one flavor. If this is something that you have not tried before and you want to try it, or maybe you tried it before but you did it completely wrong, I will leave the link to try them in the description box. If you try them, if you love them, please reach out to me, send me a message. I will send you a coupon code and tell you how to never pay full price for them ever again. So I hope this was helpful. I hope this was informative for you. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comment section down below and I will get to them as soon as I can. If you liked this video, if you thought it was helpful, please let me know by hitting the like button. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button because I do talk a lot about this subject on my channel because it is something that I am super, super passionate about because it has helped me tremendously in my personal life. If you are watching this and you're like, I have no idea what she is talking about, take a second to click on the playlist below that I have talking about exogenous ketones or just go to ketowithrachel.com. There's a four minute video on there that'll tell you exactly what you need to know about exogenous ketones and ketosis in a very short little video for you. Please stop making these mistakes and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye guys.